Hey guys, welcome back to Sophisticates by Mary. So the last upload was something very modern and trendy. So this time I thought we'd go the other direction and I'm gonna show you how I made this boho inspired arch cake top forward with this gorgeous boho inspired rainbow decoration, fondant decoration. First of all, we need to go ahead and get our cake ready. And I am just using 10 inch square cakes. Now since I don't have a pan that is the shape of the arch, I'm going to go ahead and carve it. And a 10 inch square is a good place to start. But first of all, we need to go ahead and cut off those tops. And I just like to hold my knife in one spot and then turn the turntable, tuck my elbow into my side, and that way my arm stays level and the cake turntable does all the work for you. So just go ahead and remove the tops from both of those cakes and I'm just taking off that caramelization in the middle. And then I'm using my knife halfway down on each of these layers of cake so that I get four layers all together. Since this is gonna be a taller cake, I wanted it to have a little bit more depth. So I thought four layers would be a good way to go. And then I'm just using an eight inch round pan as a guide for marking out um, where my arch top is gonna be. I'm gonna use these half inch, actually they're quarter inch, um, or quarter sheet cake boards that I'm using as a template. I cut out two of these in this shape. And I'm using this as a guide. I'm gonna go ahead and carve these before I fill them. I find it's a little easier to carve them first and then fill them afterwards. I just go ahead and remove those extra pieces. You could save them and make some cake pops if you wanted to, or just go ahead and munch on them. But um, I believe I just went ahead and threw them away because I have enough cake in my life. <laughs> I don't need any more. Just let your knife rest against your board that you're using as a template. And just try to make sure that you're holding it directly up and down so that your cake is not um, tapered in anywhere. Because this is a thicker thicker um, amount of cake that you're cutting all at once. You could cut each layer in, at a time if you want to, if you're more comfortable with that. I've just done this a few times, so I just went ahead and, and just lined them up like that. Now we're just getting our crumb coat ready. And the easiest way to, that I find to do a cake top forward crumb coat is to go ahead and use your ganache or a buttercream on the bottom. Then go ahead and layer up your layers of cake and go ahead and fill them like normal. Um, go ahead, when you put that ganache or buttercream on the bottom, make sure that it is bigger than the piece of cake that you're putting down because you're gonna go ahead and pull that extra amount of buttercream or ganache up along the sides. That way there's no waste and you're creating a nice sharp corner. I am using dark chocolate ganache this time. I like to use ganache as a filling and a crumb coat for the cake top forward uh, because I just find that when it is chilled and it is set up, it's a much firmer um, base layer and filling. You're gonna have less chance of anything slipping and sliding. I would not recommend doing a filling on these that are soft or a fruit filling. They just probably won't, um, won't work as well. You're gonna either wanna use all ganache or all buttercream, I find. Now when it comes to cutting these cakes, I get asked this question a lot with this type of a design. Just go ahead and when you're ready to serve your cake, tip it back on its back side and just cut it like you normally would. And right here is where I am just pulling that ganache up to, onto the cake. Now my dark chocolate ganache is just one part cream to two parts chocolate. That's what I like to do with the dark chocolate. Each type of chocolate is a little different in the, the proportions of chocolate to heavy cream, but for dark chocolate, it is two to one. Now just go ahead and remove that extra off of your board and set it in your refrigerator or your freezer to firm up. You can do your freezer for 10 minutes or your refrigerator for about 20 minutes. And once it's firmed up, you can bring it out and add your second layer of ganache. You would not, you don't have to do a second layer of ganache since we're gonna do a buttercream final coat. Um, that's just a personal preference of mine. So either way. But here we're gonna get our rainbow started. These are the colors I chose. I start, I wanted to do green, but I wanted to add 
some other colors along with it. So I did a dusty blue and um, brown into a tan. And to get those colors, I used forest green and a little bit of ivory for the green. And then the blue is just a royal blue with some brown added to it. And then the brown is just the regular brown that I added some white to the brown, a store-bought brown um, to lighten it up. So I get the different layers of color. And I'm just gonna roll these out into snakes. You can use a clay extruder if you like to. I just, and that was going to be what I was going to do for all of it, but um, my attachments, the different size holes, were not gonna be big enough for the size of the cake. I did use it for this, for the rope. I like to use that attachment, or I'm not sure what you call that. I'm gonna call it an attachment because I don't know what else to call it, um, to get the rope. I find it's a little easier to do that because once you extrude it out of your clay extruder that is just cake decorated, I do not use this on clay, you're going to roll it in opposite directions with your both of your hands. Kind of, you know, you kind of go back and forth in techniques, but really um, the goal is to roll your hands in opposite directions to create that rope texture, that rope look. But for the other pieces, I did just use my hands and uh, found it smoother to roll out the snakes. And I did two rows of the regular and then one row of the braided for each of the colors. The last one, uh, the ivory in the middle, I don't believe I had room for three. I did not. I just did two. And then just cut off your extra pieces on the bottom. Now I'm putting these on this board so that it can be set aside and firmed up a little bit for so it's ready for our transfer. But go ahead and add a little water in between the pieces of fondant to get them to stick together. Now there is a piece of parchment behind between the fondant and the board. But there's shortening underneath and on top of that parchment just to keep everything stuck together while you're working with it. I'm gonna use this plexiglass um, cake board. I like to use these for these cakes because they're reusable is the honest reason. Um, go ahead and since this cake has been chilled again, you can use your hands to just tip it up on its end. It's really that easy. I would not do this without chilling the cake first. And then we're just, a uh, applying our first coat of buttercream. Now I'll try to remember to add a link to my buttercream recipe on the, in the description and I'll try to add a link to it on this video as well. And this is just, I'm trying to remember, I think I did just the forest green, just a little bit of it. If I had used the leaf green, it might've been a little bit too bright because I wanted to stay with the neutral dusty colors but I didn't want the background color to stand out more than the rainbow. I wanted the rainbow to be the focus. Now just take your time when you're adding these layers of buttercream. I find that thinner layers of buttercream, but more layers with chilling time in between the layers gets you the cleanest uh, final look. People have asked me quite a bit how I get my corners crisp, how I get it so clean looking, and that's because I do that technique. More layers, thinner layers, chilling in between. Otherwise, you're just wrestling with your buttercream. And the longer, if you're using an American crusting buttercream, the longer you mess with it, the worse it gets. So just, I would definitely would follow that technique. And then I'm just bringing those edges in. This is the same technique as frosting any other kind of a cake, except for it's on its side. <laughs> so uh, just an added little little um, obstacle there, but you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. And that is water that I sprayed on the cake so that the rainbow sticks to it. I don't know if you caught what I just did there. I put a board on top of it, turned it upside down, and then I transferred it onto the cake. And since there's some shortening on the back of your rainbow and a little bit of water on the cake surface, just a little bit, you don't need it soaking wet, it's gonna stick. And then I added that last little um, rope of fondant to kind of finish that edge in between the cake and the rainbow. And here I'm making a little anchor, a little hook to attach my dried floral. I just used some brown floral wire and I just kind of bent it in half, 
twice and then arched it so that it's like a little hairpin. But I wanted the brown because the stems of these dried flowers are brown, so it blends in a little bit. But if you do notice it, it looks more like we just kind of wrapped it up and tied it with some natural um, twine. Now I added some green and then I added some blue to this also. And I will be honest, I turned it. Uh, I kind of got wrapped up in what I was doing and forgot to angle the cake so you could see what I was doing on this the whole time. I am so, so sorry about that. And I know a lot of you are going to ask where I got some of these um, dried flowers. And to be honest with you, I found a lot of these outside. Just make sure that they're as clean as you can get them before you attach them onto the cake. And um, I didn't add anything to them, no buttercream or anything like that. That's why I'm using that pin to anchor them in so that they are touching the cake um, as little as necessary. And to finish up this design, I added some macarons with just a little bit of buttercream. So there is the finished product. My cake top forward, arched cake top forward, cake with a boho rainbow and some dried floral. I hope you like it and I hope you give it a go. And if you do, please go ahead and tag me on Instagram if you post it so that I can see what you've come up with. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to Check out my other social media. I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much. And we'll catch you on the next tutorial.